Hi guys, welcome to my channel, The Old Man Survivor here. This is the channel whereby we talk much about Africa, we talk about the things that happens in Africa. This is the channel where we touch uh, the wildlife of Africa, we touch uh, the uh, nature conservation, we talk about tourism, we talk about anything that concerns Africa. So if you want to learn more about Africa, this is the channel that you need to subscribe to. And if you subscribe to the channel, don't forget to activate that notification bell so that whenever we drop a new video, you are notified because we do these videos like on a daily basis. So this is a learning process for those who would love to learn much about the wildlife and nature as well as the tourism of Southern Africa or Africa as a whole. So in the last few videos, we were talking about the animal reproductive systems, the way they are made, the way they select their partners, the way they do their things. So if you want to know more about these videos, I'll put them in the link below, like in the description box. So you have to go there and watch these videos as we are going step by step. So today we are going on with the mammals and we want to talk about the orders of the mammals because they have the orders, they have the suborders as well as the families. So we are breaking down each and every mammal going downwards up until we get to their life, their behavior, their feeding behavior and their social behaviors. So please, if you want to learn more, stick around and we will teach you this. So for those who want to be the safari guys, this is the channel also that you need to uh, subscribe to and you have to watch. And for those who love to visit Africa, this is the channel that you need to follow because we're talking much about Africa. We teach you the basics of how you have to behave yourself when you're meeting the animals and also how you have to choose your tourist destinations because we talk about all these things in this channel. So please guys, the ultimate survivor here welcomes you. Okay, yeah, uh, here are the mammals orders. Number one, we have the order Chiroptera. These are the beds. Then we have the order Insectivora. These are the shrews and the hedgehogs and the golden moles. Then we have the macro cellulite. these are the elephant shrews. Then we have the rodentia, these are the rodents. Then the lagomorpha, these are the hares and the rabbits. Hyracoidae, these are the hyraxes and the daisies. Then we have the order Poroposidae or Proposidae, this is an African elephant. And we have the order Perisodentyla, these are the odd toed anglets, all the animals with the odd toes. Then we have the order Ashok. That Tyler, these are the even toed angulars. Then we have the order carnivora, these are all the carnivores. Then the order primates, these are the primates. Then we have the order tubuli dentata, this is an advac. Then we have the order folidota, this is a pangolin. So these are the orders. Now we are going down to the sub orders of which we are breaking down a little bit. So as I said earlier, that we will be breaking down each and every animal order as well as each and every animal as you go by. So this is a long journey, guys. As I said earlier, that this is a learning process. So you have to stick around. And please, if this is making any sense to you, don't forget to like our video. Please, and also like if you just think of subscribing, this is a good time for you to do so and activate that notification bell so that when we drop new videos, you are not lost. Okay. Then we, when it comes to the Chiropteras, we say these are the pets. There's a number of pets. They are actually like defined according to their way of living and also their diet. So now, the order Chiroptera has got a sub-order that is called the Mega Chiroptera. Mega Chiroptera. What is a Mega Chiroptera? The Mega Chiroptera, these are the pets that feed mainly on fruit, even though they feed on the uh, flowers, the buds and stuff like that, but their main source of food is the fruits. These are very big pets that have got uh, the long tabular muscles and also their ears are very big that gives them the fox-like look. They look like foxes. So these are the pets that we call the Mega Chiroptera. You know, they have like a two claws on their wings that helps them to cling on the trees and also on the branches when they are feeding on the fruits and also to grab the fruits that they feed on. These are called the Mega Chiroptera. So most of these uh, fruit eating beds don't uh, have what you call the echolocation. So they use their eyesight to locate their food. It's only the Egyptian fruit bed that uh, lives in the caves that just got this uh, echolocation that is called the tongue clicking. They use their tongue to click and uh, then when the sound passes back, that's when they actually uh, locate where the food is. So most of these beds that feed on the fruits locate their food through their eyesight or smell. So we have uh, the one that is called the straw colored fruit bed. That's the largest in the sub-region. Then the Egyptian fruit bed, which is the only bed that can echolocate their food and they are cave dwelling, they live in the caves. 
Then we have the third one, which is called the epauletted fruit bat. This is the common species in this uh, region where we are, especially in the Southern African region. So these are the three birds that feed on the uh, fruits. Okay, the other suborder is called the microchiroptera. Microchiroptera, taken from the word micro, which means small. So these are the smaller birds, generally smaller than the megachiroptera. So these are insect feeding birds. They feed mainly on insects. So we call them the microchiroptera. And they also use the echolocation to locate their food and also to navigate when they are flying around. Unlike uh, the other bigger birds that uses uh, the eyesight and also the smell to, 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 to locate their food. So when it comes to the wing, they have only one claw, unlike the other birds that had two uh, claws to cling on the branches. So when they are catching their prey, they mainly use what we call the interfemoral membrane to assist to capture their prey. Unlike the bigger one that uses those two claws to cling onto the fruit or onto the branches when they are feeding. So these are microchiroptera that feeds mainly on insects and they are smaller than the other birds and they use what we call the echolocation to navigate and also to look for food. And they have got only one uh, claw on the wing and also they use the interfemoral membrane to assist in catering their food. What is echolocation? Echolocation is the means of locating, uh, be it the path, be it the food, be it whatever obstacle is on the way by the use of the sound that is bouncing back from that object. So what happens with the birds, like they produce a sound, they click sound when they are flying around, when they are just navigating around. That sound goes all the way, then bounces back on the object that is on the path. Then the sound comes back to the uh, bed as an echo. Then that's how they can tell that there's something on, the, on their way. So they are very poor when it comes to eyesight. So they use what we call the ultrasonic. So you know the human capabilities range from about 20 or 25 to 18,000 hertz when it comes to vibration per second. But as for the elephants, is as low as 5 hertz. That's how low the elephant can actually uh, find the, 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 the sound or the ultrasonic, can hear the ultrasonic or the ultrasound that is produced. Then the sound that the birds emit to locate obstacles and the prey is much as 230,000 hertz. That's 230,000 hertz. So that's how loud that sound will be when the birds actually like a produce the sound and goes all the way to the obstacle then comes back to them. So that's very loud. So these, the birds ears are actually like, um, modified to detect echo and uh, they are able to establish the, the texture, the movement and also the size of an object that is on the path. So that's how they actually navigate their way all the time. So you see them flying uh, during dusk uh, after sunset. They just fly around all of a sudden before they even bump onto you and it turns around that echo location or that echo that bounces back from you the object that is coming and also the bed is actually like a reflected and uh, goes onto their faces and their faces sometimes are actually distorted and specialized to aid in this task of echo locating so that's how they navigate and how they actually find their food in their way when they actually uh, flying around all right uh, ladies and gentlemen you might ask yourself how these birds actually locate their own echo when they are flying in numbers when they are foraging in numbers mm -hmm. what they do is like they adjust their frequencies so that they don't confuse one another when they are feeding together or when they are flocking together that's how they can differentiate uh, whose echo it is they adjust them they don't just make them much louder but they adjust them so that they can locate their own and also the squeaks that we hear them making when they are flying over our heads those are just the communicative ways they are not actually uh, actually the echo location or the echoes that they use or the echo pulses but they will be communicating to one another so when you hear them squeaking when they are flying over your head they are just communicating it's not that they actually like um, using the echo location or the echo pulses. The echo pulses or the echo location, we can't hear them ourselves as human, but it's only heard by them, the pets. They have the, the special mechanism that they use to hear or to adapt to that uh, echo location. So when they are squeaking, they are communicating. So another mammal that uses the echolocation is a dolphin, the fish of course. So that fish uses what we call the echolocation when it's navigating their way and also when they are finding their food. So they don't actually use much of their eyesight but it's 
echo location so guys this is it for today with the order chirop terra whereby we broke down the this order into two the mega and the micro chirop terra and actually differentiating the beds and their diet as well so if you found this uh, very educative please don't forget to give the thumbs up and also leave a comment in the comment box and also don't forget to subscribe and activate the notification bell so that when we drop another video we notify you and please don't forget to share to those that you think would love to learn more about the wildlife of africa learning much about uh, the the ways these animals in the world live so this is the channel for you guys and this is the channel for growth this is the channel for learning so let's support one another and don't forget to share with the friends and families okay until the next one thank you guys